Welcome back to another edition of Fast Facts Live. I am your host, your quiz master of ceremonies, Dan O'Keefe, and you're going to be surprised when we have another fun game of trivia for you today. Um, Tom, who normally produces the show uh, from his beautiful new apartment in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, he has traveled a little further south, about 90 miles down I-90 uh, to stay in on the shores of Lake Michigan, which he could have done in general, he is in Chicago. Hi, Tom. How are you? Hi. I'm doing great, actually. <laughs> I was going to keep going further until I got, like, your exact address so people could come visit you, but I figured that I'll be gone probably tomorrow morning. toxic. Well, if you want to visit Tom late at night tonight, just figure out where the Wrigley Building is and head east. <laughs> figure out the Wrigley Building, <laughs> figure out the angle at which you can see the Wrigley Building from over my shoulder, and figure out where you need to go. Yeah. I, when Tom, when I came onto the call, Tom was sitting there, and I was like, Hey, Tom, where are you? are in Chicago. I know that building. Yeah. And that, that's, the, that's the fun behind-the-scenes sort of stuff that you get here at Fast Facts Live. Excitement up the wazoo. <laughs> Ah. Um, I don't know if people at home can see. I don't know about the quality of the stream, but you might be able to see a little line right here on my face. Yeah, um, it looks that like you is... were outside with a hat on. Oh, oh no, it's worse. Um, <laughs> this is from playing beach volleyball on Saturday. I was outside for like six hours or something. I had put on sunscreen, but in my eternal... Um, knowledgelessness i did not reapply and i was wearing a sweatband the entire time uh, that went right here and i got very sunburned so much so that i took it off and i looked in the mirror and i went Lee. and this is the first time i'm being seen in public without a hat on i thought that it had gone away enough that you wouldn't be able to see it but no 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 no, no. it just looks like my face is encircled by bright redness and blinding white sits at the top we need to hire a stylist so that you can get makeup. Yeah. Where is our official Fast Facts Live makeup artist? Probably. I don't know. We're hiring! <laughs> we don't we'll pay. We'll pay you no money. You must be in <laughs> Los Angeles every Wednesday. You must live in my building. I don't want you to have to travel. <laughs> we, um, don't, we don't cover expenses. <laughs> none at all. Tom, do we have a rules video? We actually do this time. Woo! Here are the rules on how to play Fast Facts Live. Hello, I'm Charty. Welcome to Fast Facts Live. Here's how to play. There will be five rounds of five questions each. You will have 20 seconds to answer each question. You must submit an answer for every question. If you don't know an answer, take a guess. After each round Charty Bot will ask you if you want to double or nothing. You can only use it on one round per game. If you got all of the questions correct, you will earn twice as many points. If you got at least one question wrong, you will earn zero points for the entire round. You will wager between zero and ten points for the Hail Mary question at the end of the game. If you answer correctly you will earn the amount you wagered, and if you answer incorrectly you will lose that amount. A tiebreaker question will be asked to everyone at the end of the game. Answers to this question will only determine the winner if teams are tied for first place. Don't cheat, think fast, and have fun. Good luck, let's begin. One. So those are the rules, pretty simple. If you haven't played before, just follow along with ChartyBot, send in your answers, you'll be good to go. Uh, before we get into the team names, I just want to say good luck to Tom's brother Danny, who is in the state championships for volleyball tomorrow. Um, he noticed my high school volleyball shirt we in my four years there never made it to state and then last year my high school won state in volleyball so that's good anyway here are all the teams that we got playing this week in no particular order we have drama goons sing the blues oh canada the kids are back in school ding slosby solo all caps tumbleweeds mal still working frowny face doodads and what's what pending state champ Thelma's California Cool Parents, Frankie's Mama's Got It Going On, Five Crab Rangoons, 
simply buckets truth justice freedom reasonably priced love and a hard-boiled egg i don't want you to be confused about whether or not and a hard-boiled egg is its own team it's not that last team name is actually just really long speaking of really long let's get into the game starting with round number one and round number one is congrats graduates a lot of people graduated from college this weekend as i learned from my facebook feed here's some trivia questions about college and graduation graduation is a 2007 album by what artist you have 20 seconds give it your best shot There we go. Question number two. What 12 letter word is often used as a formal title for graduation? Oh, <laughs> very formal, 20 seconds. We're pausing before we move on to question number three, because ChartyBot is having an error. Yeah, bit. it's doing Some the thing again with questions. the first question, which I don't know why it's having trouble with the first question. So I'm gonna go in and make sure that we're looking good. You see, we have answers from about 60% of the teams in. Um, and then nothing from other teams. So Tom is doing some troubleshooting right now to make sure everything is going to be working yeah. for everybody. Because that's important. And I can't do anything to help it. It feels like my day job. All these tech people are working on very technical things that I'm there. Like, do you need anything communicated? Usually they don't. For whatever reason, it so it's coded correctly because half of the teams are able to do it just fine, and then the other half are like, "Oh hey, I got to refresh." And then after you refresh, it seems to work. Uh yeah, I see that with one team, they refreshed and then they're able to send in answers. Um, while Tom is working on this, I can just tell you, uh, give our scheduling update. Uh, we will be back next week with a new episode. Um, that's it. That's the scheduling update. Next week it will be June 1st. So, 1st of June. Get excited. Fast Facts Live. Hopefully we won't have to do this thing again. Not the trivia show, mind you. Uh, hopefully we do have to do the trivia again. Hopefully we don't have to do the troubleshooting again. I'm gonna hit the timer for no reason. What, Tom? It's... They're coming in. They're, They're coming close. in. Um, okay, I see you. Yeah, the uh, everybody who's kind of dealing with this right now, let me, when, at the very end of the game, when it asks for uh, any comments or anything, just let us know what you did to make it work. Um, that'll help us figure out what the issue is. Uh, we don't think it's anything with how Chartybot is coded. We've used the exact same code for the last couple of years so trying to figure out why it's different this year is or right now is strange um yeah i will say if you are having trouble on at fastfactslive.com slash play which i believe everybody is on um if you at the very bottom underneath it it says if you're having trouble with charity bot click here uh, it'll open it in a new tab, uh, and in that new tab, uh, it should, it's a different way of accessing Chartybot. It's kind of like, it, it's just like a backdoor to Chartybot. Mm -hmm. uh, so it should be a little more substantial. Otherwise, try to open it on a phone. Uh, that also tends to be helpful for people. 
Um, I see two teams that are still having trouble here, which is unfortunate. One of them um, signed up again. Um, yeah, yeah, that's so why I, think, I see. Yeah, I think let's let's move on to question number uh, three. Uh, hold on, hold on. Figured out. Or not. There we go. One of them's good. Yeah. All right. Well, let's go on to okay. question number three. Okay. Cool. Let's. And with that fun break, hopefully you took a smoke. Question number three. The farewell speech traditionally given by the student of highest academic standing is called a what? The person giving that speech has a similar, but not exactly the same, title. What is it? 20 seconds. Question number four. A graduation hat is called a what? that's me and Tom, graduated college without attending a graduation ceremony. Not by choice. Which means they graduated what Latin phrase? Hey, hey, that is it for round number one, double or nothing. If you also did not attend your college graduation for one reason or another, maybe that reason is you didn't want to go. Maybe that reason is a global worldwide pandemic. We all have it our It was reasons. global and worldwide? Okay, I like to sometimes use hyperbolic words, Tom. Fight me. <laughs> Fight these large, big hands. It's redundant. Let's run around number two. Out of office. I work from home. Question number one. Consider the world's first skyscraper. The home insurance building stood in what city from 1885 until 1931? Question number two. The former headquarters of the Longa Burger Company in Newark, Ohio, that's right, there's another Newark, is a building shaped like a big what? Question number three. Peaking in popularity in the early 1990s, what kind of office building setup is typically found in suburban areas just full of sprawl? Can't walk anywhere. Why would you wanna? Number four, McDonald's moved their corporate headquarters from Oak Park to downtown Chicago, taking over the former site of what daytime talk show's studio? 20 seconds.
Tom corrected me here. Uh, by Oak Park, I mean Oak Brook, which is a completely different place. Question number five. First designed by Robert Prost for Herman Miller in 1967, the Action Office 2 was the first kind of what typical office feature? 20 seconds. That is it for our second round, our out of office round. Double or nothing, if you still go into an office every day. If you do, I'm sorry. We are going to take a break, and when we come back, we will have the answers to the first two rounds, three more rounds of questions, and guess what? Something else that I don't know yet. So stay tuned. Oh, wow, that was really quick. 
Um, I'm, I'm still thrown off by how quickly we, when Tom says one, we get back right into it immediately. Norm, it used to be there was a little pause, but now our internet speeds are so good that we just get back to it. I've rambled enough. Let's get into the answers for rounds one and two. Starting off with the answers for round one, congrats, grads. Graduation is a 2007 album by what artist? By Kanye West. And guess what? It's his best album. Controversial opinion. Fight me. Question two. What 12-letter word is often used as a formal title for graduation? That is a commencement. Matriculation has 13 letters. Wouldn't work in the crossword puzzle. I was going to say Scrabble. It would if you had 13 letters. Uh, the farewell speech traditionally given by the student of highest academic standing is called what? It is either called the valediction or valedictory. They accepted either after looking up what the definition of valedictory is. And it's functionally the question we asked. Question four. The graduation hat is called what? While I would have liked to have accepted hat or cap, it said it was mortarboard hat. You had to be specific. Uh, and I thought that mortarboarding was a war crime. Question number five. Tom and Dan graduated college without attending a graduation ceremony, which means we graduated what? We graduation in absentia. In absentia? That's a smell joke. I'm very tired. I'm sorry. I'm not saying these jokes are any worse than usual, but I'm just very tired. Out of office. Consider the world's first skyscraper. The home insurance building stood in what city from 1885 to 1931? Well, Tom's there. It's Chicago. It was torn down, and a different building was put there. Question two. The former headquarters of the Longa Burger Company in Newark, Ohio, is a building shaped like a big what? They sold picnic baskets. So it's shaped like a picnic basket. And then they went out of business, and now nobody will buy the building from them because it's shaped like a picnic basket. And that's a very specific niche for a company to need a headquarters for. Question number three. Peaking in popularity in the early 1990s, what type of office building setup is typically found in suburban areas full of sprawl? Those are office parks or office campuses. And they were the first one um, in Mountain View, Alabama, uh, was built in the early 50s to escape racial tension in the wait, inner cities. Wait, they called it Mountain View, Alabama? Yes, the well, the name what? of the town is Mountain View, Alabama. What mountains are in Alabama? Stone mountains in Georgia, and they're just looking? I don't know. <laughs> they're just really far away. They're looking in the distance. I can see Tennessee from here. Cool. Question number four. McDonald's moved their corporate headquarters from Oak Brook to downtown Chicago, taking over the former site of what daytime talk show studio? That was the site of the Oprah Winfrey Show, Harpo Studios. There was also an Ed DeBevix around there, where they would insult you as you ate in hamburger. Question five. First designed by Robert Probst for Herman Miller in 1967, the Action Office 2 was the first kind of what typical office feature? It was the cubicle. Moving on to round number three, Memorial Day. It's on Monday. Question number one. Memorial Day was among the holidays included in the Uniform Monday Holiday Act of 1968. Really just a sexy name for a bill. Along with Washington's birthday, Columbus Day, Veterans Day, and what other holiday? 20 seconds. Question number two. The Grand Army of the Republic, a veterans organization, has taken issue with what U.S. sporting event that typically takes place on Memorial Day weekend? 20 seconds.
Question number three. True or false, the flag of the United States is to be flown at half-staff all day on Memorial Day. Question number four. Memorial Day is a holiday to remember fallen members of the armed forces. What holiday weekend before celebrates current members? 20 seconds. Question number five. Memorial Day tends to be the official start of what season? 20 seconds. That is it for our Memorial Day round. Double or nothing, if you want to. If you're taking the day off on Monday, hopefully you all get the day off. It is my belief that no one should have to work on holidays. Yes, I want things to be closed. Anyway, let's move on to round number four. It is our picture round, feeling merry and loony. I wonder what this could be about. Uh, these will be pictures of characters. All you have to do is give us the character's name. Uh, at some points, you really only need to give us a, a part of the name that lets us know that you actually know what it is, though. You'll you'll be able to tell uh, as we get into it. Uh, anyway, and if there are two characters, I will tell you which one you need to name. Starting off, question number one. Really easy. What is this man's name? Question number two, speaking of men, who is this fine gentleman? Give me his name. Question number three. Honestly, for this one, you can give either of their names because they're the same. What's the name? Character number four. Okay, so on this one, give us the name of the big red thing on the right side of the table. On the left side is the answer to question number one, which I'm happy to say you all got right. But what's the name of the big thing on the right? 20 seconds. That is it for question four, which means we've got one more question. Another very easy one. Who is this?
double or nothing if you think you did well this round. Basically, um, if you got the answer to number four, I would suggest that you double or nothing. Uh, although, maybe you didn't get number two, so I can't tell you what to do. You just do you. However, if you said that this character's name was Fred, I would very strongly suggest not using your double or nothing on this round. We are going to take a break. When we come back, we'll have one more round of questions, plus the Hail Mary and the answers to the ones you've already answered. So, stay tuned. Hey, we're back! I was ready for it that time. Tom started counting down and I got into position. Um, before we go to the answers for rounds three and four, housekeeping stuff for you. If you want to support us, you can do so on Patreon, patreon.com slash fastfactslive. Uh, or you can give us a tip in ChartyBot in the tip jar, I think it's called. Uh, you can also follow us on social media at fastfactslive on all forms of social media, except for Tumblr, because that scares us. As I said, we will be back next week with a new edition. And there is no new episode of In Conclusion coming out tomorrow. We had to pause to record next week uh, because Anna is currently sick. But next week we will be talking about Black Hawk Down. Um, spoiler alert. I felt icky about it. It seems very exploitative. Anyway, that's it. Let's go over rounds three and four. Starting with round number three. Well, actually ending with a duck. Round number three, Memorial Day. Memorial Day was among the holidays included in the Uniform Monday Holiday Act of 1968, along with Washington's Birthday, Columbus Day, Veterans Day, and what other holiday? It was Labor Day, not Independence Day. Just think about all the other holidays. They fall wherever they fall during the year, as opposed to these. These always fall on a Monday. Question two. The Grand Army of the Republic, a veterans organization, has taken issue with what U.S. sporting event that typically takes place on Memorial Day weekend? It has taken issue with the Indianapolis 500. They hate milk. Is that the one where they drink milk? Yes. Yes. They hate milk. Question three. True or false, the flag of the U.S. is to be flown at half-staff all day on Memorial Day. That is false. 
Question four. Memorial Day is a holiday to remember fallen members of the armed forces. What holiday the weekend before celebrates current members? You had to be specific with the name and to be exactly on it is Armed Forces Day, not Armed Services Day. It is legally called Armed Forces Day. And question five. Memorial Day tends to be the official start of what season? Summer. And the unofficial start of when baseball matters. Moving on to round four. Baseball doesn't Mary matter until after the All-Star break. You could argue baseball doesn't matter. Nothing matters. Matter is neither created nor destroyed. <laughs> <laughs> That's a callback anyway. that only Dan and I understand. Inside jokes are the funniest because you have to explain them to everybody else. <laughs> um, feel like Mary and Looney. Y you all got this right, even though one of you spelled Bugs Bunny B-U-G-G-S-B-U-N-N-I-E, which hurt to give you the correct answer for that. But yeah, it's Bugs Bunny. <laughs> you can see him leering at his name at you. <laughs> Question two, think of a state and then think of a frog, and you would get this man's name. It is Michigan J. Frog. You may remember him from going, hello, my baby, hello, my honey, hello, my ragtime gal. Send me a kiss by wire, you set my heart on fire. Question number three, this man and his son are both cats, and their names are Sylvester and Sylvester Jr. Very cute. Question four, this big red thing is the name of a Passion Pit album. It's Gossamer. And if it's actually a Vampire Weekend album, I apologize. In my head, they're the same band. Question five. This is Daffy Duck in the Chuck Jones short Duck Amuck specifically. If that was your answer, word for word, we gave you two points. If you just said Daffy Duck, we gave you one point. Let's move on to question number five. It's the toss-up round, which means it could be anything. I said question number five, didn't I? I meant round number five. Let's get into it. Question number one. What's the second most populous city in Brazil? Riddle me that, Batman. Break of what disease began spreading in early May 2022, currently growing around the globe? I've seen this film before, and I didn't like the ending. 20 seconds. National Advisory Committee for Aeronautics was the precursor to what current independent U.S. federal agency? 20 seconds. Question number four. Justin Thomas won the PGA Championship on Sunday after a 3-0 playoff with whom? the Hail Mary. Released just a few weeks ago, what is the highest grossing movie of 2022 so far? Mm -hmm. 
that is it for our toss-up round. Double or nothing if you want to. And then we get into the Hail Mary question. As always with the Hail Mary, you can bet anywhere between 0 to 10 points. Um, and our category for the Hail Mary this week, to give you a little more clarity on what you're wagering, is 99% invisible. <laughs> that works as a cat. Am I right, Tom? You all have no idea where I found this information out from. That's my guess. <laughs> yes. Yeah. It was it was a very, very early episode of 99% Invisible. So everybody, go, go back in time, pull up your old podcasts, and figure out in the next one minute what guess what 99% Invisible episode we're talking about. Um, while you're placing your bets. And again, to remind you, we'll be back next week. New episode, Fast Facts Live. Same time, same website. It never changes. Um, so we're just waiting on the wagers of two teams, and then we can get into the question. Now it's just one team. They might be difficult to wager because they're currently eating five crab rangoons. We need there your bet. There we go. And our Hail Mary question is Modern gas pumps were purposely designed to be similar to what other self service machines? You have 20 seconds. And just in case we have a tie, our tiebreaker question. How many gallons of gasolines did Americans use in 2020? I assume for driving and not for drinking. 20 seconds. That is it. That is all the questions. Before we get into these answers, we'll take one final break. When we come back, we'll see who won the 86th or 87th. Seven, I don't know. 87. 87th edition of Fast Facts Live. So don't go anywhere. Thank you. 
Which one? Very speedy game tonight. Let's go for the answers and see who won. The answers to the toss-up round. What's the second most populous city in Brazil? The most populous city is Rio de Janeiro. The second most popular is Sao Paulo. The third most popular, I think, is Brasilia. And the fourth most popular, you're going to have to look that one up. Question number two. An outbreak of what disease began spreading in early May 2022, currently growing around the globe? Monkeypox. I will say, the phrase monkeypox is growing around the globe makes me imagine it getting bigger physically. Like, tiny monkeys are going to be crawling into my system. And all I can say to that is, ooh, ee, ooh, no, no. Question number three. The National Advisory Committee for Aeronautics was the precursor to what current independent U.S. federal agency? I should have said T minus 20 seconds when going into the question because it is NASA, the National Aeronautics and Space Administration. Question four. Justin Thomas won the PGA Championship on Sunday after a three-hole playoff with whom? With Will Zalatoris. 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 Zalator... I've never heard of this man before. Will Zalatoris, who came in second in the Masters last year. Will Zalatoris, who had that three-hole playoff with Justin Thomas this weekend? Yes. That Will Zalatoris? Yeah, he's like our age. I don't like that. He's played in like half a dozen majors, and he's come in second twice already. I've seen this film before. What's yeah, his name? Yeah, it's called Tiger Woods. No, the guy from, like, 2016. Um, I can't think of his name right now. But he he won two tournaments, and then he's just fallen off since then. Um, released just a Jordan few weeks Spieth? ago. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I'm thinking of. Um, released just a few weeks ago, what's the highest grossing movie of 2022? Somebody said everything everywhere all at once. Uh, if you take that and make it worse, you get Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness. And that's the correct answer. Our Hail Mary question. Modern gas pumps were purposely designed to be similar to what other self-service machines? They were similar to be ATMs. Think about it. They got those number pads. And the at thinking, the ATM, I typically get told the weather. <laughs> the thinking is at the ATM, you feel happy because you're getting cash. Mm -hmm. And so those happiness emotions will go will be applied to gas pumps and you associate a higher number value with more happiness at a machine that looks like an ATM so that you're more inclined to spend more money at a gas pump. Huh. It's just big sheep. oil. We are sheep. Is what I'm, what I'm hearing. We are mice and we are sheep. Um... The tiebreaker, how many gallons of gas did Americans use in 2020? 123 billion. That's a lot of gas. Hey, man, that's a lot of gas. Um, I'm being told that it's Zalatouris? Zalatouris? Um, Zalatouris. By one player who went to school with him. So, we're two degrees away of Kevin Bacon. Um, and now let's go over and see. Ha, ha, Dan, Dan, you did yes. a wrong, you did a bad. It, is, it, is, is it because Rio's actually the second most popular? No. What? Guess which what question do do you got bad. What question did I do bad? I don't know what you're talking about. NASA? It's not Doctor Strange. That's what, yeah, it is. No, it's not. I looked it up. Look it up again. It, oh, did I do it wrong because it's actually Spider-Man, but it's because it came out in 2021? No. What? It's the Batman. Okay, Wikipedia page. 2022 in film. Number one, Doctor Strange, 810 million. Number two, Batman, 769 million. Hold on, let's take a break real Batman, quick. We'll Batman, Batman, Batman domestically 
has made more money than Doctor Strange. Worldwide, it's Doctor Strange. I, I did not oh. say domestically. This is a worldwide show. We have players all over the globe. Aha. Aha. Okay. Okay. You've I... successfully defended yourself. Congratulations. Thank you. Do I get my PhD now? No. I've done my defense. You get a master's in library studies. Ooh. Yeah, already? I have a lot That's all more it to took. go before I get that. That's all it took. <laughs> anyway, let's go over the teams and see who won. Um, in 16th place with negative one points, it is their first time playing. So thank you for playing. I'm sorry that you ended in the negative, but also thank you for telling us how to pronounce Zalatoris. It is Simply Buckets. In 15th place with zero points, Mal still working. In 14th place with one point, even though they did not answer a question because they had to log out and log in again, uh, it is Solo. In 13th place with four points, Truth, Justice, Freedom, Reasonably, placed lo reasonably Priced Love, and a Hard Boiled Egg has four points. In a tie for 10th, Thelma's California Cool Parents, Tumbleweeds, and Seth Green's NFT wearing Joker makeup all have six points. In ninth place, Solo Sai, who joined in again, they have seven points. In eighth place, five Crab Rangoons have nine points. In seventh place, Pending State Champs have 13 points. In sixth place, Doodads and What's What have 18 points. In fifth with 21, Frankie's Mom has got it going on. Ding Slosby has 25 points in fourth place. In third place with 29 points, the kids are back in school. In third, second place with 30 points, O Canada. In first place with 44 points, it was a runaway game so long as they didn't miss the Hail Mary because they bet 10, they could not have been caught. Um, and they didn't miss the Hail Mary. They won by 14 points. Drama Goons sing the blues. Congratulations to the Drama Goons for winning this week's edition of Fast Facts Live. As champion, you get to choose between an Amazon gift card, a Creative Land Shop gift card, or the official shirt of Championsity. And we all know which one you should pick. Hey, Dan. Hey, Tom. Hey, Dan. Hey, what? I think you did a bad. What? I, I, think, I think the Sao Paulo thing is wrong. <laughs> yeah. Um, one second. <laughs> <laughs> is real? We're making sausages here. <laughs> In a quick Where did you get this scores. information, Dan? Uh, maybe a 10 year old episode of Jeopardy. <laughs> oh, Dan. Oh, Dan. San, San Paolo is not a place. Uh, does that affect the winner? No, it doesn't. It does affect who can, second and third, though. So the kids are back at school, finishes higher than O Canada. Blah, 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 blah. Drama Goons, you still win. <laughs> An auspicious end to the game. Oh, that that's... This is going well. <laughs> Dan, you got to fact check your stuff. It was correct. 10 years ago, where I currently live, in season 29 of Jeopardy. Oh, I thought... <laughs> Are you watching them in order? <laughs> no. We're Fast Facts Live. We did the live. This was mm -hmm. a pretty quick game. But the fact part... But we you gotta bring the facts, Dan. Bring the facts. <laughs> we'll bring the facts next ah. week. All right. uh, thank you to everybody for playing this week. Very special thank you to our patrons. Biggest thank you of all to Tom for producing the show. Thank you for hosting and getting your facts wrong. You're welcome. Only on the second wait, part, wait, though. Wait, thank you for getting your facts wrong. Mm -mm. Can yeah. we just not? All right. Thank mm. me for getting my facts wrong. Uh, as I said, we'll be back next week with a new edition of Fast Facts live. <laughs> In the meantime, everybody, stay safe. Have fun. Get vaccinated. Bye-bye.